Good morning guys, it's Parker. It is the day before the rally. So today we're gonna do a practice run uh, with directions to see how close to a specific time we can get. We're gonna do some calibration for the Speedo. And apparently, uh, I've been hearing from other people that the Speedo that they give you is so accurate that it changes its calibration throughout the day uh, and it becomes slightly inaccurate because when the tires warm up, uh, the pressure changes in the tires and the rolling diameter changes. So you're actually going a different speed because it's based on uh, the diameter of the wheels. So we'll find out. Excited to race some other people. Unfortunately, we're, well, we're racing at the speed limit, but it's gonna be a good day for sure. So I'm taking you along for the ride. Just pulled it out of the garage. Getting gas right now, the gas tank is actually uh, right in the back, uh, in the rear of the car, and then uh, the newer cars actually have an ode to that by having the little uh, either Mustang logo, GT badge, especially the 50th anniversary badge uh, on the new Mustang GT, the circle. I actually used to hang out here quite a bit, kind of lame, but the extra mile uh, Chevron station was kind of the place to go in high school when there was nothing to do, because typical suburban town, bunch of old people. Uh, we'd ride our bikes over here and eat the really crappy, uh, man, taquitos and burritos <laughs> and random stuff and drink a lot of energy drinks. Coming up to the hotel where today's meeting is. Rally cars everywhere. If you haven't been on this, being part of the Great Race family, I just want to welcome you. Hold on, you're in for the time of your lives. We just thank you and praise you for all that you do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let's have a great race. <laughs> Look at this thing. Doing a calibration test right now. We've got two minutes and 16.9 seconds between signs. And then I've got a lap timer here that I'm going to use splits for to measure. Uh, we're at one minute and two seconds. That's the speedo up there saying we're going 50 miles an hour, but as you can imagine, it's pretty hard to keep it exactly 50, especially when you start going up hills. And everyone is just blowing by us. So it appears the speedo is calibrated exceptionally well. Check out uh, this last split. We got uh, 1 minute 57.7 seconds, and the target time is 1 minute 57.5. So, I mean, getting closer than uh, 2 tenths of a second. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen. But now we ran into uh, bumper to bumper traffic, so can't really do anything about that. Good news is it's just calibration, but now we're gonna try to figure out uh, how much faster we need to go uh, in order to catch up by the end of this calibration period, which is 19 minutes and 20.9 seconds long. I'm uh, gonna have to do some speed calculations to figure that out. So this actually does involve some uh, quick mental math because you're not allowed to use a calculator or your phone or anything. Taking a lunch break after doing some calibration, parked next to a 1966 Shelby GT350H, uh, which actually we saw at uh, Sonoma Raceway at the drag strip the other day. Pretty cool they were running that. Uh, and then we got the 65 next to it. Pretty cool to see the two cars next to each other. Let's see if there's some interior differences. Seats are very different. Dash layout's different as well. Got a 335IS in front of us with a Hawaii license plate. I've never seen one of those before. We're out in the middle of farmland. The speed limit, uh, we're supposed to go 15 miles an hour, uh, and there's some cattle crossing. It's pretty hard to maintain uh, a speed like this over. The road is just bumpy as hell. And just going 15 miles an hour in a car like this it doesn't want to idle and go slow speeds is pretty hard. This would be a perfect spot to film reviews out here. It's public roads, amazing scenery, both in the trees and out in the farmland with all the grass. It's now 2.16 p.m. And we've been rallying for about uh, 
30 minutes. Well, we just finished the time portion of the practice rally and honestly have absolutely no idea how we did. Whether we're within a minute, five minutes, 10 seconds, not really sure because they don't give you uh, any target times that you're supposed to hit, unlike the calibration. Uh, they just give you drive at 25 miles an hour until you see a road sign that says stop sign up ahead, then switch to 15, then stop at a stop sign for a specific amount of time that you have to figure out with these uh, stop and pause time calibration sheets. So we'll see. We're going to go to uh, Peacock Gap, which is a golf course I actually played a lot at uh, in high school and uh, over my gap year and figure out who won the uh, practice rally for the day. There's no real uh, awards or anything, no money, but it'll be cool to see. Coming up to the observation point back at the hotel to get our instructions for tomorrow. I don't think we get the uh, results yet, but we'll find out. Turns out this is the place where we're gonna get our score, so honestly, how do you think we did? A minute or two? Shitty. <laughs> I have, it's, it's really hard. No Especially, idea. I mean, we come up to no stop idea. signs and two people are in front and other cars that aren't on the, on the rally are there. It's pretty hard to figure out. All right, about to get our score. <laughs> How bad did we do? 1965 Ford Shelby GT350. Yes, sir. Scoring you as a 1965. White. Do you have your name spelled correctly? Yep. Rookie, rookie class. Yep. Rookie class. 30 seconds early on the first leg, fairly good. Four seconds late, very good score. Another 30 seconds, another six seconds, good score. There you go. So we just got our official score back and we were a total of a minute and 10 seconds off through four checkpoints. So we were 30 seconds off, 30 seconds early for the first one, then four seconds, then another 30, and then six seconds. And then there's a factor that's multiplied by our total a minute and 10 seconds, depending upon the year of the car. So if you're driving a, a Model T, you're gonna do, you're gonna have a much uh, more forgiving factor than if you're driving something from 1972. So we multiply ours by 0.975 and we get a minute and eight seconds, 0.25. So I don't know, a minute off for an hour and a half journey Sounds pretty good to us, but comparative to people who get it dead on with zero seconds, I guess we got some work to do. We just arrived at Peacock Gap Golf Club, and interestingly enough, uh, in high school and during my gap year before college, I played at this course quite a bit. Um, I guess a local Mercedes dealership is sponsoring uh, this event, so we've got an AMG GTS as well as a G-Wagon back there. But we just got to compare some of our results against some other people. There was the um, rookie mentor who's been doing this for 30 years uh, and you can ask him questions and whatnot so as a reference point we got one minute and eight seconds off which isn't all that good but he actually got 48 seconds off so to think done it for 30 years I'd say that's not bad percentage wise um, obviously uh, a 20 second difference uh, in terms of professional racing makes a big deal but this is a really really pretty golf course and actually they just started uh, they just finished this clubhouse. When I used to play here, it was there was a picture of what the new facility would look like, but it didn't look anything like this. Let me give you a little tour. But yeah, in high school, I probably played this course maybe 250 times. So it's familiar territory and fun to do it with uh, a bunch of rally folks and really excited for tomorrow, which is uh, the official start of the rally. We leave at 10.49 a.m. in San Rafael uh, and off to Old Sacramento. And then from there, we leave the state of California. I just went to Best Buy to get a uh, ethernet adapter because my Mac's too skinny to have a freaking ethernet cable and on the go. I want to be able to upload videos for you guys. And I met a subscriber who was like, hey, you look an awful lot like the guy from Vehicle Virgins. <laughs> Turns out I am the guy from Vehicle Virgins. And he's got an awesome uh, E92 full bolt-on 335i. These things get pretty fast when you throw a chip in it. And I'm actually, I'll be honest, I'm not sure what the rest uh, entails for full bolt-on, but clearly it has an exhaust, maybe some headers. 
Um, but just the tune itself and the wheels are pretty awesome as well. So shout out to you as a subscriber for having an awesome car. Do a quick little walk around. Looks like drilled and slotted rotor upgrade. I don't know, those look like factory calipers though. And it's a manual, good for him, hell yeah.